Hey everyone, Bill Parrish here from GTT Audio and welcome to the channel today. Well today I'm going to basically continue a discussion that we started back, way back, over a year ago in episode 3, which was how to stream digital right. And I talked about the different components. And today I'm going to get a little more in-depth on that and I'm also some things have changed it's more than a, it's a year and a half year and a couple of months have gone by and uh, in the world of audio in a high-tech hobby uh, things progress new things happen um, new technology comes out new components are born and we just we move forward this episode is definitely not going to be for everybody. I mean, if you're a mid-fi guy, you might want to shut it off now. We're, we're going to go through different progressions and steps, but where we're going to end up is absolutely not for everybody. It's for our clients, the ones that want the best, and they will accept nothing less. If you want the best, if you're one of those guys that strive to be the best, buy the best, and want the best, the end of this episode is for you. Now, first of all, first of all, let's talk about streaming or your database and what serves up files, whether they be on a hard drive or over the internet. What serves up files into your DAC, into your computer. And you know, Rune, Rune is universally accepted as being the best at that. So there's two sections to Rune. There's Rune, the software, which we really can't do much about. And then there's Rune, the hardware. What are you going to run this application on? Now, I had tried all sorts of computers, PCs, gaming PCs, Mac laptops, uh, the big um, kind of the, the cylinder, the Mac Pro that I use up in my office. I ran that app on everything. And I can assure you that each and every computer I put it on sounded different completely sounded different. So that really was a head scratcher. And then you think, well, the computer with the most RAM, the most powerful, biggest, baddest computer is going to sound the best, which clearly was not the case. My big Mac Pro, that cylinder looking thing, uh, did not sound best. Actually, a MacBook sounded the best for whatever reason. It was interesting. But then Rune launched the Nucleus. And the Nucleus blew them all away. Let me bring out the Nucleus here. It's nothing really to look at. There's no fans in it though, so this is all heat sinks. Doesn't get very hot. On the back you've got a couple of USB inputs, outputs. You've got an HDMI port, uh, two HDMI ports. You've got your Ethernet port. This has to be wired, has to be wired in. And then it's got your, uh, your DC input, uses a 19 volt DC input. And you're on an off switch. It's a basic Linux computer. But Rune puts their own operating system on this. So it's their own operating system which is designed to do one specific thing. And that one specific thing that that operating system will do is run the Rune app. The piece of software that Rune developed that we all know. That's it. It's got, a, uh, it's got an i7 Intel processor in there super powerful processor it does one thing it runs this app this by itself 
sounds so good, so much better than the Windows computers I tried, the Mac computers, and I chalk it up to it does one thing. It, 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 it's, it runs a operating system. It's not Windows. It's not, it's not uh, OS X. It is Rock, developed by Rune. And that is running an app. That's it. Now, you get this and you're done? <laughs> if it were only that simple. But it's not. Because... It comes with this piece of crap, which is a super noisy switch mode power supply that plugs into a wall outlet with this couldn't be worse crappy cord connected to it. I mean, this isn't built for audio. This isn't built for anything. It's, it's built to generate the voltage and it does it in a super nasty uh, noisy way still with this plugged in to this it beat all those other computers well they're pretty noisy as well so let's talk about power supplies i think i briefly mentioned this in episode three and i'll do it again there's a lot of companies out there in high-end audio that offer a range of products from good, better, best. Just keep it simple. Good, better, best. Especially on the digital side. I mean, most of the companies out there that are offering a range of uh, digital components have, if it's a DAC, have the same DAC in there. If it's a transport, it has the same transport in there. CD player, same boards. The only thing that changes in those components is the power supply. The power supplies are everything in audio, in high-end audio, in all audio, but especially high-end audio. It gives more reserve, it gets quieter, it buffers more. It's just high-end audio needs good power supplies. You know, it's like uh, people that want surge protectors on their, uh, on their equipment. I mean, uh, those surges aren't taking out your clock radio. They certainly aren't going to take out a power supply on a big high-end audio piece of equipment. I mean, these, these power supplies can absorb a lot. They are built to incredible standards. But not that. It's just a piece of junk. It's... But they have to give you something. They have to give you something to get working on this, as we talked about in the past. Let me get rid of this and bring in some more things for you to look at. So in the past, I talked to you when we did that in episode three about this. And I said, here's a power supply. We don't recommend it. And, uh, or we might have recommended it, but we don't, we don't sell it. And, uh, and nothing, none of these power supplies I'm going to talk to you about today do we sell. But, uh, but it's stay tuned to the end. We do have a code for you. Uh, because I highly recommend it. In any case, this was a very good step up from this. Very good step up. You can, you could plug different things into it. A uh, 19 volt for the, for the nucleus, say a 12 volt for your switch. I don't know, another uh, 12 volt for a power, uh, uh, a, a hard drive, say a 5 volt for um, whatever, a clock. Uh, you could only use one. I think one of the most important things is you can add a aftermarket power cord to it. I felt 
that that was probably more essential that's what, than what's in here. Again, an aftermarket, good aftermarket power cord versus this. Ugh. Anyway. They're building it to a price point. They're charging you for a souped up, super duper, nice case work, fanless computer in this. Uh, that's, you know, they, they cannot, they can't give you a $2,500 power cord. That's what the unit costs. Anyway, so th this, is, this is essential. This is a major upgrade, a major upgrade for hardly any money. A super fine product that comes out of China but it's a, it is a cheaply made product from China. Well, actually quite nice, but, uh, you know, it's got some weight to it. But this company, they, they saw the light and they decided to redesign it and they came out with this one. Same company. I don't know if it was the same price or they upcharged a hundred bucks for the, for the newer one. Look at the size of that. I, I mean, it's it's at least a third bigger. It, it's uh, it's massive, it's, uh, weight wise. It's so now we've got the same nucleus. I had the same power cord, and by the way, I use some. Uh, I don't use the crappy cables that come with it because they're like this. Have our friends over there at Kabbalah Sosna make us a nice umbilical cable. Huge, huge, huge improvements with that. I think it's a three, three part step. You know, you, the nucleus, good cables that's in between and on the power supply and then the power supply. I think the, the sound improvements are like a third, a third, a third. I mean, think about it. Do you really want, and this is, call it, this is your, trying to extinguish a, a, a big fire with a fish tank hose, you know, a smaller than a garden hose, like one of those, uh, like a fish tank hose versus a, a real uh, fire hose. Well, the, the currents can flow here, and this has been custom designed and specially designed for uh, the nucleus and the, the stuff. But when I, when I put this in versus this, all other things being equal, just an AB, and of course these things take some break in, right? I mean, these are a mass of uh, transformers in there and... They take some break in, but just took a burnt in unit here to the upgraded version. Boom. I mean, massive sound improvement. A deaf person could hear it. I mean, you did not have to try. You did not have to try at all. So I think it was, it was a well worthy uh, investment because that's what was available and known at the time. And these are very good, inexpensive, Chinese-made aftermarket DC power supplies. So what's next? And then the question is, well, what do you do with this? Well, power something. I mean, you can probably sell it for what you got into it on, on Audio Gone or power your, power your big router coming into the, into the home. I mean, you can always use an extra DC power supply because there's a lot of things with this crap around. This can take the place of that. So I would recommend doing it. Don't throw it in the back of a uh, closet. Let it get lost. Put it to good use. You bought it. It's relatively inexpensive. But now here's the new dog. This is for the people that want the best. This is extremely expensive. I'm not gonna, we don't discuss pricing on the channel, so you can call me about it. If you wanna buy it, I'll give you a code to contact the manufacturer. The manufacturer is Sean Jacobs, and um, it's the DC4. 
And what this has done is revolutionized the nucleus, the rune, streaming as I call it, or even the hard drive files. Mine, the, my DC4, you can have uh, one tap, two taps, three taps on the back. They're, they're fixed. You need to know what you're doing. I'm running a, uh, a 19 volt for the nucleus. I'm running the 12 volt. What am I running the 12 volt for? The, um, oh, for my switch. And I'm running the 5 volt for a clock that reclocks everything. Maybe we'll talk about that in the future as well. But he makes the best aftermarket power supplies. He's using the top quality parts. Take a look on the website. Look inside the, uh, the unit. Look at the transformer encased in stainless steel. Uh, there, look at how the build quality how they run all the cables. It's, it's, it's the highest quality parts. I'm not going to go into all the nuts and bolts. You can read it on the website. Um, but this is, this is a serious piece. Now what did this do when I say a serious piece? I'm telling you it's good. But let me describe it to you. So I'm not just throwing words out there with no meaning. And I'm sitting, for those that don't know, I'm sitting in my in my uh, what we call the big room, one of six listening rooms here. And in front of me, I've got the big YG XVs, the Sonya XVIs. I've got two pairs of AudioNet Heisenbergs. A couple of JL Audio Gotham subs and Kronos turntable, the, the Pro, of course. Uh, their phono stage, AudioNet's PAM G2 with an EPX or an Ampere, whatever I'm using that day, power supply, a uh, AudioNet Stern, Mola Mola Tambiki, Orlick Aries, all Kabbalah Sosna realization. So, pretty decent system. Certainly cost enough. Anyway. So those that have heard it know it's, it's special. And when I put this in, everything else got more special. We got more body, more sound pixels, which is information. It was like going from a, a, uh, a flat screen TV that was running 720p. It was running, it was running pretty good. Call it 720p on the digital side, just went to 1440p, just went to 4K. I mean, serious. Uh, and then, not only did it gain this information, but it gained this body, it gained this weight. The sound stage got deeper. Maybe I should come this way, deeper. More expansive, but it grew in every way, from top to bottom, from wall to wall. And then it just seemed to make walls disappear. That, my friends, is huge. Huge compared to what it did to these good but inexpensive Chinese-made power supplies, which go use somewhere else. You, you stick this in your system, you stick that in your system somewhere else, you're going to get a double bang. It's go, really going to sound good. So I'll pop a photo on the screen here and uh, show you what, uh, what our front end looks like before we get to our endpoints and our DACs. And you'll see on the top shelf you've got the Rune Nucleus. And that's connected to a 5-bay RAID array. Now, I have listened and tried many NAS units, and then I've tried the RAID arrays, this one in particular, directly connected to my room nucleus, and I prefer this as opposed to a NAS. I think just a NAS is noisier. Below that, I've got... Uh, 
I've, I've, I've got a switch. So the nucleus and the switch, and then the clock inside the switch, all connect to this Sean Jacobs DC4. And then, I don't know if you can see, but uh, you know, there's a couple of power cords coming over. I'm, I'm uh, powering my RAID array with a uh, Kabbalah Sosna emotion cable, and I do have a realization on the Sean Jacobs. So if you want to know how good digital streaming can get, put the best stuff on it. I promise you that the nucleus is not the choke point, that the network cables aren't the choke point. It all comes to getting the power correctly up front and cleaning every, sending everything the cleanest signal you can. And once you do that, you do get something special. Again, call me. I'll give you a code. I'll talk to you a little bit about the Sean Jacobs, and I'll direct you where to call in the U.S. to get one of these custom built for you. All right, I hope I helped. I think it's important. I think a lot of people are doing it. Um, but again, if you have a rune nucleus with this, well, you might as well, yeah, you've, you're running Rune significantly better than another computer, or what, uh, but you're still in the mid-fi game. You need to get some good connections between the units. You need to get a good power supply. Whether you get the DC4 Sean Jacobs, whether you get these uh, some Chinese models, Regardless of what power supply you'll get, you will get boosts in your performance. Sean Jacobs DC4 for the maximum boost. Be sure to like us, comment below, subscribe, share, and we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks.